Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to your monthly reading for October 2024. This is for Scorpio, Scorpio Rising, and Scorpio Moon. And if you're new to my channel, I work with astrology, tarot, and my guide so you feel like you are getting a personal reading. So first things first, Scorpio, happy birthday. Welcome to your birthday season this month. I'm so excited for y'all. This is going to be a big month, all right? So big month of not only just taking it easy, but letting the magic around you unfold, okay? There's a lot happening this month. Really big focus on relationships, personal connections, karmic connections as well. I mean, they're going to be at the forefront, but uh, especially as we kick off this month, as you can see, we have a new moon solar eclipse in Libra. Sun is in Libra for the you know the first half of the month, but uh, then we move into Scorpio season, your season, and that's gonna bring some light into you know relationships. Can be even like with finances as well, uh, but it really is about your personal transformation. I mean, this is moving into your sign, and this is all about Sun and Scorpio. I, that's all about seeking your truth. All right, doing shadow work, uh, but we'll talk more about that uh, a, a little bit later. I want you to know all the inner planets, Venus, Mercury, and Mars, this month, they've come out to play hard. All right. Venus in your sign is humongous. All right. You're definitely going to feel it um, because there's going to be a lot of trines and they're really, really auspicious. So you're going to feel a lot of movement this month, especially in love, relationships, money, creativity, beauty. So if you are new to my channel, by the way, so I'm going to break down the biggest highlights, then I'm going to do your spread. And then after I break it down week by week, where I go through all the aspects that's going to really affect you this month, the best days to watch out for, for Scorpios. And you even see all the asterisks here, the blue asterisks, the best aspects of the month, even like challenging aspects. I want you to watch out for you know so just keep that in mind not all the aspects are on the whiteboard there's never enough room in the monthly forecast but i'll give you the highlights and and let me just uh, go ahead and put out the big themes um friday october 4th well after we have this new moon solar eclipse that's happening on october 2nd which is really big so why don't we actually start with that that's that's happening in libra all right that's your 12th house so 12th house is everything beyond the physical plane. It's just subconscious intuition. I mean, you may be going really deep, okay, with this eclipse. A lot of unrooting things that have been holding you back um, it, it, deeply in your subconscious. So this feeling empowered as you move forward can have to do with partnerships, relationships, but something that just brings all this peace and harmony in your life. You know, the 12th house is also like facing fears, all right? It's also uh, uh, like hidden enemies is a part of that, even self-sabotage energy. So there could be something here that you're recognizing that you're moving from, okay, that you're moving from with this new moon total solar eclipse. It, it or Not total, but solar eclipse. And it is really strong. It's at 10 degrees. It's cardinal energy, really strong energy. Again, we'll talk more about it later. I want to mention October 4th for you. This is really great. Venus trine Saturn. Okay, Venus in your sign trining Saturn in Pisces. I can't even like... This Saturn brings that long term energy, commitment energy. It's really strong here. And the focus here is love and relationships, creativity, money. But it's your Saturn's in Pisces in your fifth house, uh, just love and relationships. So there's something here really, really really nice for you. There's this long lasting energy that is happening and it could be very emotionally driven for you. You could feel emotionally driven around this time. Remember, you know, Venus is in your sign, Saturn's in Pisces, two water signs here. So I, again, love this, you know, Saturn in your fifth house of pleasure and joy and even something with children around this time, um, creativity, self-expression. I love it. Okay. Procreation as well. October 8th, Venus will then try and Mars. Oh my goodness, what's not on the whiteboard is on that same day, Mercury will try and Jupiter. So this is definitely one of the best. Like, mark this in your calendar. This is really, really nice. Now, we know what happens when Venus and Mars gets together, which is really special. Uh, and if Venus is what you want, if Venus is what you desire, Mars is how you get it. So definitely take action. This is 
high vibration harmony, all right? If you think about uh, ancient mythology, like even Roman mythology, Mars and Venus had a daughter, right? Concordia. So the goddess of harmony, all right? So when Venus and Mars gets together, um, and then in Greek, we have Aphrodite, passion, pleasure, love, everything is connecting for you around this time. It's really, really special. Now, Mars and Cancer is in your ninth house of spirituality, higher mind, uh, even education, maybe learning something new around this time, uh, publishing, broadcasting, but it is just, uh, and even long distance travel as well, but spirituality. So all of these could be big themes for you around this time, but with Mercury trying Jupiter, oh my goodness, great day to pitch, negotiate, schedule an important conversation that you want luck behind. Remember Jupiter, plan of good luck, fortune. Um, you, you could come up with like this brilliant idea, especially with something with finances, maybe like business partner here, or something with love as well. It's just like, remember Jupiter and Gemini is in your eighth house. So there's that intensity there. That's just like, oh, I love this. So really great. And, uh, you know, Jupiter is going retrograde uh, just in the next day. So take advantage of this day. Um, and then you see Pluto going direct. Well, again, of course, we'll talk about these more in your weekly forecasts uh, to come every week uh, more in depth. And even, you know, at the end, when I pull more cards for you, uh, October 13th, the sun trans Jupiter, best aspect of October. OK, suddenly we're trying Jupiter and Gemini, just enormously abundant. All right. So this is all that there's success here. There's doors opening for you. All the good stuff, expansion, good luck, fortune, wisdom, profit, even I mean. The list goes on, especially with relationships for you. There's something here. And again, when I say relationships, it can be love. It can be career. It can be both. I mean, there's something really special. Mercury will be moving into your sign this day, too. I mean, this is a big day for you. Really big day. Um, I, I see some big things happening with financial matters as well. Uh, so really, really great. And now Mercury moving into your sign, by the way, Scorpio. That is more molder than Scully, okay? Um, so this is going really deep, exploring the unknown and like loving it, right? And when I say going deep, you, all right, really going deep, doing that shadow work, all right, and, and wanting to, all right, because you there's, you know, a sense of like uh, unrooting things for you and even things coming to the surface, all right? Mercury and Scorpio also like secrets coming to the surface too. Now, October really is this big preview um, to kind of like a big exit. And I say that because we kick it off with that new moon solar eclipse in Libra. And we also have the full moon in Aries. Wow. Wow. Your life is changing. Okay. And I say that because remember the lunar nodes, the points of destiny are in the Aries Libra axis. Before they move to the Pisces Virgo axis in January. So remember, we're leaving the Aries Libra axis. And so there is this on October 17th with this full moon in Aries, something turning point for you, big turning. First, it's a big, strong super moon. Okay. And full moons in Aries just tend to be very bold and powerful anyway. Uh, think about the new moon total solar eclipse we had in Aries. April 8th, what happened in your life around that time? Because it was such a big eclipse, such a big moment. Could have been that entire month or even like a month after. It's just big. What were the changes that were starting to happen for you around that time in terms of everyday activities, work, routines, even health? This is all six house matters, okay? Uh, fitness, wellness, um, you know, pets even, but work is a big part of this. Work is a big part of this. So there's something here coming to a culmination, something ending for you. Uh, it's uh, maybe even like a turning point. Now, Mars is the ruler for Aries, okay? On this day, Mars is getting a little, uh, <laughs> Mars is a little feisty and dipping his toes in that retrograde. Remember, Mars is in Cancer in a sign that he doesn't like being in, all right? And he's about to go retrograde soon, so definitely dipping his toes in that retrograde. Um, Mars is a warrior. Mars is the god of war, so imagine the god of war sitting around a campfire holding hands with people while there's a ukulele playing and everyone's singing i don't know four non blondes or and everyone's crying and you know having this emotional release and um 
or think about like you know the god of war going to like a housewarming party and doing air kisses to everyone mars does not like any of this all right he's like get me out of here so mars is a little feisty around this time remember mars does not like being a cancer has been here for about a month and a half now so he's getting antsy he's like get me out of here so there could be a sense of like power circles around this eclipse as well. That's what Mars is doing. And we are getting close to Mars opposing Pluto very soon, beginning of November. OK, so just be frosty. Stay cool. I always say that have that release that you need to have with this full moon. Remember something maybe illuminated for you. But the great news is that after this full moon, you see all the other planets have gone up to Mars and they said, listen, we need to talk. Be cool. All right, just be cool. All right, don't be so, you know, you're going to be fine. And so you see that Mars is going to be fine for the rest of the month. All right, uh, Venus is going to move into Sagittarius this day. Oh, this is really great. Money, 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 money for y'all. Okay, Sagittarius rules your second house of income, salary, finances, Venus, money. <laughs> All right, Venus is also love and relationships, and you know that. So Venus is leaving your sign, moving into a place where second house is also self worth and self value. And Venus and Sagittarius in general, it's just very carefree, optimistic and fun, sort of unbound, open heart, open mind, uh, a bit whimsical. I love Venus and Sagittarius. And again, there's going to be this focus on you uh, for you on like in terms of self-worth, self-value. Remember, you've uh, like this is big, right, with Mercury in your sign uh, as well. So. Anyway, just really strong energy. What's not on the whiteboard is that Venus will sextile Pluto this day. Huge, huge, major in terms of this really strong energy and flow with relationships and money. Okay. It's going to be big. I wouldn't be surprised if you're going to be having a lot of conversations this month, important conversations this month as well. Now, October 22nd, happy birthday. We move into Scorpio season, love, relationship, finances, all of that, you know, um, Big emphasis here, getting really Inspector Gadget, getting really Mulder, getting really Mulder. The truth is out there, okay? But it's also somewhere within you. This is, again, remember what I said, this is seeking your higher truth for the next four weeks. Sun and Scorpio, that you know, this is you, okay? Sun and Scorpio wants answers, so it's going deep. It's having those personal transformations and even wanting to do that shadow work and, you know, have things come to the surface. Um, so really, really big shift when we move into Scorpio season on that same day, the sun will square Pluto and the sun is still in Libra at this point before uh, moving into your sign. So meaning this is happening, sun square Pluto at 29 degrees, which is an anoretic degree. It's a critical degree. So again, something power struggling here could be something with siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, neighbors, even around this time. Uh, it's your third house. So even short distance travel, maybe not seeing eye to eye with like maybe planning a trip with someone you're like, well, I want to go to Marrakesh. And they're like, well, I want to go to, uh, you know, uh, Vancouver, like whatever it is, like they're just keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, but even still this month, a lot of powerful aspects. It is ultimately a really big month of change. Scorpio, really big month of change, but at a slower pace. And it could be a very emotionally driven month. Remember a lot of water sign activity, you know, Venus will move into Sagittarius and, you know, we'll get more into that fiery, you know, and when we get to November, but for this month, just remember there's four retrogrades happening, asking you to go within. Okay. Thinking, feeling your way forward to become the best version of yourself. All right. Living the reality that you want to create for yourself. Remember you create your reality. So a lot of this month is taking that action. Action, all right. Use these aspects to your advantage too, by the way. Okay, so let's break it down, Scorpio. Um, let's see what's going on for you for the month of October 2024 for Scorpio, Scorpio rising and Scorpio moon. And again, happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right, Scorpio. Let's see what is going on for you. All right. Scorpio, I do a traditional called a cross spread. It offers the best overview. And if we need to pull clarifiers, you know that we will. I got you, Scorpio. Secondly, Scorpio, I love y'all. Thanks so much for being here. Um, I do have to mention, if you are new to my channel, I have been under the weather and I still am in the process of recovering. So thanks. And if you are a subscriber, thank you so much for all your supportive messages and kindness and being patient with me. Um, and you'll notice that I am doing this uh, reading at a, it's a little dark. Um, 
So it's it's a certain time of day that I have to do it. All right. Uh, okay, let's get to, I'm like gazing at you and like Scorpio. Okay. Oh gosh, yeah. This is gonna be a big month for you and you are gonna be absolutely great. Look at this, Scorpio. All right. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, you're good. Uh, there's definitely gonna be some moments that you have, but hey, this is a big month. It's a big month. Uh, can I, do you see what's happening here, by the way? You see what's happening. It's all uh, court cards and major arcana. So very, very, very significant month for you. Very significant month for you. Powerful month. You got the Ace of Pentacles. So wonderful. There could have been something that you've already begun. <laughs> something, maybe a new job, new career, something with finances that has come through. It is Pentacles. It is the biggest Pentacle in the deck offered by the Hand of Spirit. You see the Golden Pathway here, the Archway. Listen, there are some paths in tarot, uh, you know, in life, you know, some are a little curved and windy. Not here. Mm -mm. Go forth. It's straight on. Straight on. So think of this archway as this gateway, okay, into this new something just rooting up for you. Uh, I love it. And it could have already happened. It could happen with this eclipse as well. There's just so much happening around this time. Uh, remember, uh, there's partners, a lot of partnership energy as well that's happening. Okay. But this is really special. So again, could be a new job, new career, new profession, maybe even promotion, maybe something with money, maybe something even like inheritance, investments as well. Remember, you do have Jupiter and Gemini in your eighth house. That brings out luck and like expansion and profit as, as, as well. So really wonderful new path from the get go. You got the Queen of Wands and the Heart of Your Spread. I love this. Okay. So it seems like you are, it, it, well, you see what's happening here. It's like there's something new is happening for you and it's putting you in this spotlight and you're getting everything you want. That's the queen of wands. She has this power of attraction. She's like definitely mastered like the law of attraction. She can get everything. So vibrate at that high frequency. First of all, that, you know, speaking of law of, 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 of attraction and power of attraction, this is really great. You see the sunflower in her hand, uh, sunflowers in her throne as well. Okay. The, wink and nod to the actual sun card where the sunflowers actually exist and you know the sun card so she has the powers of the sun okay optimism abundance i mean sh this is special she is very entrepreneurial she's a businesswoman as well so if you're here for a career hey i mean there you go. I mean, Queen of Wands is Aries, by the way. All right. So remember, uh, that's work for you, right? Your sixth house. So uh, this is really great. Your day to day, but uh, a lot of empowerment here. She's the most charismatic queen. People gravitate toward her. You're this. Uh, this is really great. Um, all right. So I was going to say there's some sexual energy too, and I'm not surprised. We're moving into Scorpio season, but. Yeah, there could be that on your mind. Okay, let's leave it at that. There's activity happening around there too. Um, you have the emperor in your challenge area. Okay, so very interesting. Remember what I said. Mars is a little, uh, you know, at some points, uh, you know, in the first half of the month. And uh, the emperor is Aries. <laughs> so you got these two Aries cards. So definitely keep an eye. It's just everyday activities. Aries rules your sixth house. Your routines work responsibilities when it comes to work your duties to work colleagues even okay uh health matters as well that could be something there um but anyway emperor there you go there's someone that you may not be seeing eye to eye with maybe an authority figure remember there could be some moments of like power struggles this month so just be just you know handle things with grace always be responsive not reactive there could be someone that could be really just like Get, like making you get your stinger out, but stingers in Scorpios. Okay. Stingers in is all about emotional growth with Mars and cancer and everything. Anyway. Uh, so just be mindful of that. There could be someone here that just, you've got to see eye to eye with. Okay. Just take that time. Now you've got the devil as well in your crown. So interesting. There is something that, again, that sexual energy is here. You've got the devil here as well. Um, in your crown. So you see the two people from the lover's card, by the way, chain to the devil. So again, partnerships, relationships, going to be a big emphasis for you this month, but maybe even recognize something that you're possibly recognizing something this month. I, I, this has got to end. This isn't good for me. Maybe it's, you know, you are, for instance, in a, like friends with benefits situation. But deep down inside, you want a, a like, you know, a true relationship, like 
you want to like fall in love and have family, things like that. So recognizing that, like, is that distracting you, right? The devil pulls all this energy for you. It drains all your energy. It's an energy vampire, right? So uh, this is codependency, pessimistic thinking. So always look on the bright side, right? And you've got the queen of wands and the heart of your spread. Uh, you're going to be fine. Okay. Just recognize what you do have to let go because there is going to be, even with that eclipse, a sense of something that may be coming to an end. But remember, you want to take action for everything in your life with that full moon in Aries that's happening this month as well. There may be something that, you know, again, transition or something illuminated for you or just a big transformation you're going through but recognize it that is the key okay and if it's not partnerships or relationships remember there's something within you where you have to think about what is the thing that i have to let go even maybe on a subconscious level uh the devil did come up in your crown but like something that is you know kind of like in the way of you connecting to you know your crown chakra the divine uh this is also codependency obsessions addictions, bad behaviors, all of that, all of that. So just be mindful. You got the King of Cups and the Rudier spread. I absolutely love that for you. Okay. So there is that King of Cups is Scorpio, by the way. So, uh, this is really nice. There's that emotional stability that's happening here. You can see him, his throne literally on top of water. Look how turbulent that water is. It didn't matter. Nothing's he's a King. He's a King. Of Cups. Nothing's going to knock him off that throne. So hold on to that emotional. First of all, don't bottle anything up inside this month. Uh, is a big thing, but uh, just work with your emotions. It feels like you are going to have this stability in terms of emotions, but there may be something that you're going to have to, right? Okay, so temperance in your future. How amazing. How amazing is that? Okay, so there is some, there's so much confidence here. It's ridiculous. Okay, there's so much like great, even with, you know, the Queen of Wands, you have temperance in your future. Temperance is uh, attributed to Sagittarius. Again, that's second house of self worth, self value that brings that confidence. Like, I know what I'm worth, I know my value. Uh, great, wonderful. You have an archangel in your future telling you, hey, everything's working out the way that. Uh, it should. You're on the path that you should be on and know that, you know, your finish line, you're going to get there. All right. So remember, I said this month is all about patience, that, you know, temperance is all about that balance and that patience and, you know, just being mindful of those themes, uh, even like moderation, self-control is what like self-restraint is what temperance literally means. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Uh, so this is going to be really great. So it just seems like you're moving into this flow. All right. So remember, go at, you know, your pace that you feel comfortable at and just don't worry or stress about anything this month. You have nothing to uh, get rid of that devil energy in your crowd. But otherwise, wow, this is wonderful. You're great. I mean, mm, you even see the uh, speaking of like you see the sunflowers there. Um Anyway, you see the disc on the archangel's forehead. So really tapping into your intuitive side too, but you're going to feel that. Anyway, let's get to your stuff. Oh my goodness. Uh, I try to, I'm like trying to keep these readings short, because, but uh, they're still all going over. Anyway, Scorpio, you deserve it though. It's your birthday season. Uh, listen, uh, what was my line's? Oh, if you like this reading, it would be great. If you like, subscribe, leave comments. Yeah, I actually want to tell me what's going on. Scorpio, tell me happy birthday. What a big month. And everyone goes through these big changes through their birthday season. So. Um, and, you know, I love y'all. All right, let's let's get to it. Okay, you're uh, like, don't even. You're good. You're at, what's, I, you don't even you like clear as day what's happening here. Um, you're absolutely good. The fool. I mean, yeah, do it. Do it. Take uh, a lot of y'all. I'm getting, you know, I'm feeling you've already done that. Like made big changes in your life or thinking about making, taking those like big risks and leap of faith like the fool. But this is kicking off the fool's journey. And a lot of y'all want this new, you know, uh, changes, new era, basically. And you see the full abundance of this. So the sun here, you know, listen, the, the sun the actual sun only appears in a few cards outside of the actual sun card and the sun is optimism it's abundance like i said earlier vitality it, it's just opportunities it's 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 wonderful here okay so there's a innocence that comes with you know the fool but also he's a risk he's 
standing on the edge of the cliff, not even looking down. So take the risks that you need to know that you're being t taken care of and, and you're, uh, you've are you got temperance in your future and you've got the 10 of pentacles in your external factors area. So what I talk about finances, yes, big theme for you this month, okay? Uh, really big theme, really big theme, all right? You got the 10 of pentacles here in your external factors area. It just seems like, you know, this card is all about it. It's abundance. It's raining pentacles. It's raining money and wealth in the form of the tree of life. You've got this huge castle. You've got all this harvest here. You've got a lot of family energy here too. I mean, this is security. This is coming into your physical realm as well. Appreciating all those things in your physical world. Remember, you know, as soon as Venus moves into Sagittarius, you're really going to feel that. All right. Remember Sagittarius does rule like uh, you know, salary, income, finances, but also material possessions, things in your physical world, things that you value, then this is, you're good. <laughs> you're good. You're absolutely good. I, I, I can't even, I can't even, uh, this is really wonderful. Um, you know, this card is highly associated with like, you know, in like inheritance as well that you could be inheriting something um and i do want to clarify that you know because i think if someone commented this other day like oh i don't want inheritance that means someone's gonna die no it doesn't it you know like sure those are you know what it's possible but you could like inherit like a business when your you know parents are retiring and uh like i've inherited a lot of things from people that are still alive so i don't want you to think that but this is highly associated with it and you do have jupiter and gemini in your eighth house okay so that expands there but so anyway it could be some financial matters but also something coming into your physical realm now uh page of wands there you go yeah go for it be inspired. It seems like you're going to be inspired this month. Uh, Page of Wands, there's a new direction clearly that you're seeking, that you're hoping for. Uh, maybe even something completely new for you. Uh, very with the Wands, uh, so much creativity around that. Uh, also, work related matters. Remember, there's going to be some big shifts for y'all possibly with that. Uh, maybe again, this new direction, but also travel may be something that you may be thinking of as well this month. Um, create. It's all about creating something. Remember, you've got Saturn, Neptune, and Pisces in your fifth house of create, creativity, procreation, recreation, all the great words. Um, really nice. And then you have the three of pentacles in your final outcome. So it does seem like there is going to be something new that you're moving into with money. Again, more pentacles here. I mean, you've got all these pentacles, three of pentacles, wonderful all right so this is more about collaboration working with others teamwork makes the dream work three of pentacles birth of new things one two equals new reality right it being a three so i love this uh yeah there is likely for a lot of y'all new job uh new colleagues perhaps as well maybe even in like new boss boss or it could even be like a project that you're working on that's getting off the ground but this is success this leads to success okay but other people involved other people involved you could find yourself in a new capacity in some way it could be even family energy for you so let's break it down week by week all right scorpio let's see what's going on for you week by week um this month you are like you want me to clarify something i didn't clarify it's your birthday month i should uh let me see here let's do a fine let's do the final well let me see the devil what is going on there okay mm. All right. Okay. Well, there you go. You got strength. You get rid of that. You get all your power back. All right. <laughs> You're going to be fine. You're going to be absolutely fine. Um, so very interesting. Very interesting. I love that you got strength. You can see the symbol of infinity over her head. You know, just that empowerment, that courage that you feel, that heart energy as well, you know, pulling that strength from your heart. It's got to be very powerful. You're going to feel so empowered if once you, you know, take her of that devil energy. Now, week by week, the first week, obviously we have the uh, eclipse on the second. It's going to be humongous uh, new moon solar eclipse in Libra. You remember, this is part of a series. All eclipses happen in series. 
This is an eclipse in Libra happening during Libra season. This is big. Remember, I said cardinal energy here. So you're going to be feeling a change, a turning point right from the get-go. This is a faded event for the entire month. I mean, so keep that in mind. All right. Now, uh, and of course, we'll talk about more in your weekly forecast. I do like that Venus and Uranus are getting along around this eclipse. But with but remember, Mars is a little cranky around this time. He didn't. You know, someone took his parking space. Like, he's just like, eh. So just watch out for that Mars energy. Remember, Mars is your traditional ruler. Um, Mars is in Cancer in your ninth house. So it may be something like, uh, something that is, has to do with your belief system, how you're seeing things. Maybe there's not, someone not seeing eye to eye with the way that you're seeing things. Something with travel, publishing, higher mind, like I said, education as well. We'll talk about it more in your weekly forecast. Okay. Remember, Mars and Cancer is all about that emotional growth and by the way we are approaching like this water try this great water trying it could be a very emotionally driven week the first week with the fact that saturn's in pisces venus is in your sign and then we have mars in cancer we actually i think the moon's in your sign this day too okay so uh not your sign, but uh like the day during this great trying like days after you know once the moon leaves libra goes into your sign actually so october 4th venus trying saturn uh we we talked about that the day that i do want you to watch out for is um october 5th mercury squaring mars this is a day where i maybe not make like a really big decision around this time uh there could be something remember mars is just kind of like getting a little bit antsy at this point being in cancer for so long so there could be some like pent up energy that you may be feeling mars is physical energy too all right so this is a great day to not only remember be responsive not reactive mars is trying to get you to be like impulsive to maybe say things that you didn't mean so this is a day great day to burn off energy okay if you're feeling a little mm, all right by jogging going to the gym gardening whatever you know what it, dancing um, you know around your house uh in front of the mirror whatever you you know makes you happy and remember on october 8th just three days later mercury will trine jupiter that's gonna make every you know that's the day to have big conversations and whatnot all right so um let's see what's going on for you all right for the first week of october oh you got the five of pentacles all right so yeah there's definitely going to be something here that i want you to keep an eye on with partnerships relationships possibly again it could be in a work capacity a financial uh capacity as well there could be something there but definitely something um you know maybe even like what do they call like the people that uh like uh i don't know it's something with inv like investments like in like if you're into investments uh financial planners or whatnot even but even so whatever it is it's pentacles okay so the first week yes yeah, so you could feel like there's something that uh is coming to an end you could feel that there is remember everything that's happening is happening for you my right so there could be something here you've got the ace of pentacles here but so there's something here that you could be losing for this new thing to come through okay that's only going to make you like like powerful empowered like uh so very just try not to overthink things and just recognize what you need to let go it could be a partnership relationship this is a taurus card taurus rules your seventh house of partnerships relationships commitments again can be career love whatever resonates with you but pentacles look at that in the window and the church window so these two people in this card are focusing on their plight when they are literally outside of church so there's all this hope around them there's all this support around them all they have to do is reach out and and you know uh you know be in touch with people right so if that's what you feel like you need to do it remember i said don't bottle things up this month all right and the other thing is yeah something maybe uh you may be seeing something coming to an end and it's just a listen look at all this great stuff happening for you all right so remember it's like cup half full at this i'll even clarify this for you um it could be like a business partner too anyway oh gosh literally when i say partner like come on i just told you this is all about partnerships and relationships for you and then you get the lover's card clarifying it so it looks like something new is on the horizon for you remember i said there's very few cards where the sun actually appears outside of the sun card and you see the full abundance of the sun and the lover's card as well you have another archangel archangel Raphael. 
<laughs> you're uh, you're absolutely good. You're so it just seems like there is some maybe adjustment or maybe a completely changing of like partnership and career or employment colleague maybe maybe if you're the boss or maybe there's a boss whatever it is. Look, you're you're moving into and it. Let this go. Let this go. Okay. As they say, it's with an eclipse, even though it's a new moon, solar eclipse. Yeah, it's still something leaving behind, like for something new. You're good. You're absolutely good. You're absolutely good in love, in money. I mean, partnerships, right? This is really great. Uh, you're going to be fine. You got all these pentacles, the lovers attributed to Gemini. Remember, you've got Jupiter and Gemini in your eighth house of shared resources, inheritance, investments, bonuses, commissions, royalties, uh, joint bank accounts. You're going to be fine. Second week, uh, Tuesday, October 8th. Ooh, remember Venus trying Mars, Mercury trying Jupiter. Uh, and then Jupiter goes retrograde on October 9th. Listen, uh, Jupiter goes, and that's going to be until February 6th. Jupiter goes retrograde every year so it really is you know the only reason it could be like a really big time is because pluto just goes direct like the next day so it's just like uh, that concentration around that time but jupiter retrograde just think about every all, all the changes you've been going through since may right it's kind of like reflecting on how far you've come okay how much wiser you want to become you've become and even like where you know how much where you want to become wiser in with with the Jupiter retrograde, okay? Um, and then Pluto goes direct. Again, that's going to be something where you're going to feel a lot of energy, you know, with communications. This is your third house, writing, researching, uh, learning new things. Uh, even, like I said, relatives, siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, even neighbors as well. There could be something here and short distance travel, but... Uh, Pluto going direct. We'll talk about that more in your weekly forecast. This is going to be big because it's the last time in our lifetime that we have Pluto and Capricorn, right? In our life, it's done as of, you know, November 19th. Anyway, Sun trying Jupiter, October 13th best aspect of the month uh mercury moves into your sign all right really going deep really getting molder doing a lot of shadow work so uh let's see what's going on for you and possibly just like really you know a lot of conversations too i would be surprised if you have like deep conversations around this time anyway let's let's go let's see what's going on for you for uh the second week of october Ah, you got the Seven of Cups. Interesting, because this card is actually attributed to Venus and Scorpio, right? So remember, Venus hasn't moved into Sagittarius yet, and it's still in your sign. Venus is still your sign. So remember what I said earlier. If Venus is what you want, if Venus is what your heart desires, Mars is how you get it. But you got to know what you want. You got to know what you want. What are you manifesting? What are you trying to manifest? Uh, is it, you know, is it truly something that um you're seeking okay that for yourself in terms of love and relationships uh money all of that everything venus rules but then also this card is uh you know there is that sense of there's all all everything here career there's you know achievement i mean like what is going to drive you in terms of i know truly deep down inside i'm being my authentic self and I'm going after the things that I know that are are on my path, okay? So it really is a time just to really trust your intuition and put all your energy toward the thing that you know is going to be authentically you and is going to be the path that you are creating for yourself. Um, I'll even clarify that seven of cups for you. Oh my gosh, I think you get it. And then you get the Knight of Pentacles, so really great. I love this for you. You know, the Knight of Pentacles is a Virgo card. Remember, Virgo rules your 11th house of your hopes and wishes and dreams. So I listen, you know what you want. It's got to take you straight into abundance. You, uh, you know, it's the Nine of Pentacles. All the Pentacles stacked up. Look at her standing in her garden of abundance, all that harvest. This is a lot of enlightenment as well really having worked hard to earn your spot here. All right. Um, and there is a sense of like self-sufficiency, independence, even financial independence. Remember how I said, interestingly enough, by the way, how I said this card is attributed to Venus and Scorpio. Well, this is attributed to Venus and Virgo. You can even see the symbol of Venus all over her gown. So, wow, big, big, big energy here. Um, you're going to be going through a, a lot of changes, but big changes, empowerment, like I said, 
you know, even with that clarify her with a strength card, even in your main spread, it's still all court cards and, um, you know, um, uh, major kind of, but you're good. You're, this is, you're moving into abundance. I, you're good. You're fine. You're fine. You're good. You're going to be great. Just know what you want. <laughs> Scorpio. Oh my gosh. My dorky laugh. Okay. So, um, Monday, October 14th. Sun square Mars. I want you to watch out for this day. Okay. This is going to be a challenging day when the sun square Mars. Remember what I said earlier, by the way, how Mars is physical energy. Well, when it's squaring the sun, this is when I want you to just physically slow down. Don't take on too much on this day. Okay. Venus is going to be opposite Uranus around this time as well. Okay. Remember Venus is still in your sign. Uranus in Taurus, your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. Don't start a relationship this day, all right? Especially with his unsquare Mars, too. Uh, but it just may be not be seeing eye to eye with a relationship. Again, we'll go deeper in your weekly forecast. Uh, but then you you have Venus try Neptune on Tuesday, October 15th. What a great day. This is humongous for especially if you're an artist, creative type. I mean, this is all about creativity, imagination, even if you're not. I mean, it's just for any for everybody. Romantic. Oh my goodness. Neptune in your fifth house of love and romance and true love. I this is huge for you. I love this day for you. And then Thursday, October 17th, you got the full moon in Aries. So really, like I said, strong super moon. Uh, something is uh, coming to an end here. Okay. Uh, turning point, something being illuminated for you. Um, remember, Mars is just a little around this time. So there could be some kind of power struggle here. Just it's it's a time to let things go. It's a time for release. All right. So um, a big big one here all right big full moon that's happening in your sixth house everyday activity so you see that happening here too by the way like i said you're moving into something new here very empowering for you uh and then yeah okay and then uh Venus, Sex on Pluto, and then Venus moving into Sagittarius, which we discussed. Those are great. So let's see what's going on for you. All right. For ooh, the third week of October. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. I was saying in another I was for another uh, sign that I was reading where the death card did come out. The death card does not come out enough. Uh, it's one of the best cards in the deck. Um, I love it. And you know the death card is attributed to you. So when I say you're having this huge transformation in your life, I mean, come on, come on. This is big. This is big. You know this is big. You're going through it. Um, and get excited for it. Get excited for it. Okay? Get excited for this transformation that you're going through. You are, uh, it's like you're moving into this new era in your life. All right? So uh, even like, remember, there is that personal transformation, all that energy there with all that Scorpio energy, but just really going deep. Uh, you're changing. I mean, things are happening in your world. And then I'm going to point one thing out. And I think this is the last of it, by the way. This is the last of it. You see the sun coming out on the horizon here. <laughs> So you're move, just move, continue to move toward all that, you know, abundance, uh, that optimistic, like glass half full energy. I like this is just uh, you're you're fine. You're good. Just accept this transformation that you're going through. And you know, it's almost like I don't even have to say that. Like y'all want it. <laughs> y'all want it. Now, last week of October, uh, really love Monday, October 21st, Mercury trying Saturn. Write this in your calendar. This is an amazing day. Um, this is putting... You know, this is long term goal energy, especially with relationships for y'all. Something with creativity here, uh, even like finances, investments could be big here. But, you know, with Mercury training Saturn, have an important conversation. There could be an important conversation that you have that turns into something big. There's something here that you could come up with. But this is a Saturn trine. It's very special with Mercury, the planet of communication, the messenger. Right. So really nice. And even like intellect, logic, thinking. Uh, and then we move into yeah, on the 22nd Scorpio season. Happy birthday, Scorpios. I love this for you. Uh, remember Scorpio season. You know, the sun in Scorpio wants answers, right? Just going deep. It's going deep. Having that personal transformation, wanting to do some shadow work as well. I mean, you have it all over. You're you're going through. You're going to be fine. Uh I, I love this. Just remember, as we move into Scorpio season, remember we do have the sun square Pluto around that time. Um, and that's it. Okay, so 
Oh, actually, Thursday, October 24th, you may love this. This is one of the best aspects of the month. Mars is going to sextile Uranus. Now, Mars and Cancer, sextile Uranus and Taurus, again, something here with partnerships, relationships, that's surprising, unexpected, lovely, wonderful. I mean, this is, uh, you know, really sweet and special, especially it's so nice to have Mars sextile Uranus after we had Mars square Uranus with partnerships. You may, there could have been something that... Yeah, but this is great. This is wonderful. All right. Uh, and then uh, we'll end it with, you know, we'll end it with Mercury training Neptune, October 31st. Okay. Very magical. Very, a lot of compassion here, imagination here. This is all happening in your fifth house of love, pleasure, joy, romance, children, like uh, recreation. This is on Halloween. Go out there. It's Mercury's training Neptune. So, a, be social, be very imaginative costumes, things like that, things like that. Anyway, uh, let's see what's going on for you, Scorpio, for the last week of... October. <laughs> you're good. You're good. All right, you're good. I'm trying to do the 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 people in here. Their car, like, their arm. Anyway, you're good. Uh, Ten of Cups, there you go. Um, how funny is it like with the, because we also have Mars trining Neptune. Um, that's going to happen October 28th. Anyway, Neptune is in your fifth house of joy, pleasure, love, romance. Like I said, every, you know, like that's what this, uh, this is happy. Everything. This is, I mean, the 10 of cups. Okay. You got that rainbow indicating the promising future, the only rainbow in tarot. You have all this enlightenment here. Cuffs, emotional fulfillment. This is just to a whole other level. Happy everything. Happy couple. Happy kids. The, the house here. I mean, like, you're good. It's you're look at what that transformation is leading to. Okay. And so really, really great. Uh you're I mean, I don't even I mean, this is really nice. This is really special. You've got a great month ahead for you. Remember a lot of partnership activity happening here, but a lot of like just you owning this month <laughs> honestly like this is big a lot of big changes i'm very excited for you scorpio all right so thanks so much for tuning in if you like this reading it would be great if you like subscribe leave comments tell me what's going on and next week uh we will uh go deeper in the uh aspects and again i apologize for light i see it's gotten so dark since i'm gonna let you go i'm gonna let you go all right thank you so much scorpio i'll see you next week bye bye